So about a year ago, my friend Nicole recommended this book to me after I was talking to her a little bit about how I felt torn between my life as an engineer and my creative life as a dancer and an artist. I decided to pick up a used copy of the book and after some initial resistance, I can confidently say that this book changed my life. And I know that's dramatic, but it's true. I thought it could be fun to talk a little bit about why I like this book so much, why I think all creative people should read it, and tell you a little bit about how I got so much out of the book. And if you are not into reading, I got you. I will share some of my biggest takeaways from the book, and then hopefully you can get some knowledge that way. If you've never seen my face before, hi, I am Gabby, and usually on my channel I make vlogs about my life as an artist with two non-art jobs. So yeah, let's do this. Okay. The first thing you might be asking yourself is, what is this book? What is the 12-week course about? I'm confused. So the book is by writer Julia Cameron and it's been credited by many famous creatives and everyday people as being like the book that unblocked them creatively. It's a book for any creative person no matter what you make. You could be a writer, a dancer, a painter, a TikToker, whatever. So instead of teaching you any concrete skills when it comes to your creative practice, it takes a more holistic approach and it tries to look at your whole life to see what might be blocking you creatively. For example, the book delves into lessons you may have been taught in childhood, limiting self-beliefs, and it helps you figure out your own identity. And before you think that this book sounds way too woo-woo-y for you, trust me, I felt the same way. I personally struggle with things that are super like woo woo wee and out there. Also, I keep using the word woo woo wee. I don't know how else to describe it. Like, I don't know, too like spiritual and esoteric. Is that a word? Let me look up what esoteric. Esoteric. Later in the video, I'll also try to give some helpful tips on how I kind of moved past that aspect of the book to still get a lot out of it. So the book is designed as a 12 week course where you read one chapter every single week and there's also some tasks and check-ins that you do every single week. But I personally feel like you could read it however you want. Basically every week you'll read 10 to 15 pages about a certain aspect of your creative recovery and then at the end of that section there's going to be weekly tasks which can be anything from collecting rocks outside to journaling prompts. I would say the course took me anywhere from like one to three hours every single week, not including the time that I spent writing my morning pages, which we'll get to. So one of the first sections in the book will introduce you to the basic tools of the book, which are morning pages and artist dates. So morning pages are three pages of writing whatever is on your mind. Sometimes I will find myself writing about my deepest, darkest thoughts, and other times, like this morning, I am writing about how my matcha tastes kind of weird and how that makes me sad. I personally have never in my life been able to consistently journal. Something about the book telling me to do it has really helped me become a journaler. I did it all throughout the 12 week course and I haven't stopped since. Like I am still doing these to this day. I find them very helpful, but I struggle to articulate why. Like it might be because it just like empties my thoughts out of my brain every single morning, or maybe it's because it takes all of these like thoughts that are floating around in my head and like puts them concretely onto a piece of paper. I'm not sure what it is. Something about them though, I like. I like them, they're good for me. I don't think that they work for everyone and that's okay. I think that's kind of a theme throughout this book. Like there's a lot of tools, lots of tasks, lots of pieces of advice. I think they give you a lot in this book so that you can kind of pick and choose what works for you, if that makes sense. So the second basic tool in the book is artist dates. And this is basically where you take yourself on a little play date and you can really do anything as long as you are alone and without distractions. I think the goal with these is really to spend quality time with yourself and therefore your inner artist. I found these to be the hardest part of the book, hands down. Like carving out the time to go do something just by myself was difficult and on some weeks felt 
literally impossible. The way that I approached these was to keep my expectations very low. So instead of like taking myself out to an art museum, I would just go to the shop down the street and look at art there. Or I would go to a thrift store and just look at stuff with a more like artistic eye. Or sometimes I would just go on a very intentional walk out in nature and like take pictures of flowers that I liked. I started to understand the value of these more and more as the weeks went on, but I wouldn't say that they got any easier for me. So those are the two basic tools. You definitely don't need to read the book to do those. If you took yourself on any cute artist dates, I would love to hear about them down below because I feel like I need to keep making myself do these even though I'm done with the book. Okay, so now I wanted to talk about the three biggest takeaways I had from the book. Um, I will be reading from my copy, so uh, it's like a little book club situation. The first one is unlearning your negative core beliefs. The book has this list of negative core beliefs, and I will read you the ones that I circled as things that really resonated with me. Okay, <laughs> it says, I cannot be a successful, prolific, creative artist because I will go crazy. I don't have enough good ideas. It will upset my mother and father. I will do bad work and not know it and look like a fool. I will never have any real money. I will die. I'm serious, that one did resonate with me. I will feel bad because I don't deserve to be successful. That one is sad. I will only have one good piece of work in me. Then the book says, none of these core negative beliefs need to be true. They come to us from our parents, our religion, our culture, and our fearful friends. Each one of these beliefs reflects notions we have about what it means to be an artist. So this exercise made me do some serious reflection. I felt very called out and kind of like ashamed of these beliefs because some of them seem like outright ridiculous. But honestly, I did need to name them before I could go about unlearning them. Like before I read these, I would not have told you that I have a fear of dying if I become a full-time artist, but it turns out that I do have that fear. So once you recognize what those negative core beliefs are, you must actively destroy them. And the book uses affirmations as a means to do so. So when working with an affirmation like, I am a talented artist and my art is important, the book will ask you if any like negative blurts come out while you're trying to tell yourself that positive affirmation. Once you start noticing those negative blurts come out, you can ask yourself, where did these come from? And what the book proposes is that you will start realizing that a lot of these negative blurts really just come from people from your past. Something about realizing that those negative blurts are actually just messages that you've received in the past from other people makes them so much easier to dismiss. Like you realize that they're not really how you wanna feel about yourself. They're just reflections of what other people told you to feel about yourself, if that makes sense. Now I actively seek out positive affirmations that life as an artist is possible and that you can be an artist and be financially successful and mentally sound and not die. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so another big takeaway from the book that I really liked is the importance of self-compassion, aka be nice to yourself. So I'm gonna read you some good old quotes from week nine. The blocked artist does not know how to begin with baby steps. Instead, the blocked artist thinks in terms of great big, scary, impossible tasks. When these large tasks are not accomplished or even begun, the blocked artist calls that laziness. Do not call the inability to start laziness. Call it fear. Fear is what blocks an artist. The fear of not being good enough, the fear of not finishing, the fear of failure and of success, the fear of beginning at all. There is only one cure for fear. That cure is love. Use love for your artist to cure its fear. Stop yelling at yourself. Be nice. Call fear by its name. Okay, you might think that sounds really corny. Uh, the only 
the only way to cure your fear is love but it's true it's true it is corny but it's true okay i never realized how mean i was being to myself until i read this chapter i viewed bad art or resistance to start something as a personal failure really though i was putting way too much pressure on myself to just be good at things right away and that pressure made it really hard to try new things and to grow this section really emphasizes congratulating yourself on the baby steps and as someone that is very impatient for progress to happen that was like really nice to hear like oh i can just be happy with the little bits of progress i have here and there i think it's really really easy for us to look at people on social media and be like why am i not there yet well you're not there yet because you're just not you're not meant to be there yet you're perfectly fine where you are and if we spend our whole lives wishing that we had what other people have we'll just be sad we'll just be really sad and i would rather be less successful and happy than uh, drive myself crazy by wishing that i was somewhere that i'm not so the third takeaway that i wanted to share from the book is that creativity requires confidence in yourself and knowing who you are. In week seven, the tasks have a strong emphasis in just figuring out what you like, like what your tastes are. So for example, it will ask you to wear your favorite item of clothing for no special reason. It asks you to collage a bunch of images that reflect your life and your interests or just simply images that you like. Um, it tells you to do this with a magazine. I did it on Pinterest, not gonna lie. It also asks you to quickly list five of your favorite films and try to distinguish if there's any like common link between all of them. I might have just liked doing these because they're fun, but I would like to think that these exercises will help me in my creative practice as well. I kind of think that if I can figure out what I like in my own life, then I can kind of weave that into my art. A very concrete example of how this worked for me is I realized that I really, really love interior design. Once I started including interiors into my illustrations, I really fell in love with how they looked. Like I was like, these rock, I love these. The more you can get in tune with your own personal tastes, the easier it's going to be to kind of like tune into your creative tastes as well. Okay, I keep moving around because I keep getting hot. I had to turn off my AC and uh, now I'm sweaty. Um, anyways, I thought it would be fun to answer some questions that I've gotten on the book. I kind of have made this book my personality trait over the last six months. So I have gotten quite a few questions over the months and I also asked for some questions over on my Instagram. So let's get started. One question I've gotten multiple times is how do you get over the woo-woo spirituality aspect of this book? The book mentions God or the great creator or the universe. It gets into like the divine a lot. And I personally am not very religious, although I am spiritual. So for me, like I didn't really vibe when they were saying like God or the great creator. Basically, I think the best way you can go about this is come up with a substitute word. So the book even mentions this. When it says God or the great creator, you might feel more comfortable replacing that with the universe or my inner artist or, I don't know, creative juice. <laughs> Next question. Do you think that the morning pages need to be done every morning? I would say that was the intention, but also they can't really tell you what to do. Morning probably isn't gonna work for everyone, so I feel like do it whenever you can. I think you should just set a goal for yourself and just do that. Another question I got, is it worth the buy? Yes, I bought it used for $10 and it's been worth every penny. Another question, is it super time consuming? I would say it depends. Uh, I managed to complete it with a full-time job and a part-time job and running this YouTube channel. Sometimes it kind of ate into time where I otherwise would be resting or like making art, but I found it not to be too much. Although I also like don't live with anyone, so it's pretty easy for me to just like pick it up whenever I have a spare moment. So 
I don't think it's gonna be equally as easy for everybody. I would say that like some weeks when I had the time, I would spend like three hours doing the readings and all the tasks, and other weeks when I didn't have the time, I would do it all in like an hour and I would skip a lot of the tasks at the end of the chapter and just be like, mm, good enough. Also, I would say that the morning pages were very time consuming when I first started because I would like write a paragraph and then be like, now what? But as I got more practiced with it, I would say that the morning pages are faster for me now. Like I probably spend 10 minutes writing them every morning. Question, what was your favorite practice and least favorite practice? I like this question, it's fun. Um, I loved the journaling prompts. For instance, there was this money madness exercise. It would be something like, if I had more money, I would blank, or people with money are blank. And I did not realize how many toxic ideas I had about money in my brain. Um, I just find it really fun. <clears throat> I just find it really fascinating when a journaling prompt can like unlock these things that are going on in our brain and we like don't even realize them. So the journaling tasks would be my favorite practice in the book. My least favorite were the weekly tasks that required you to go out and do stuff. So I used that example earlier in the video of like one week they literally tell you to go and collect rocks outside that you like. I personally read that and it was like a Sunday in the middle of February at like 8 p.m. And I was like, no shot I'm going outside to go collect rocks. Like they're under snow, first of all. So I didn't really vibe with those. Some people probably find them really fun. And again, that's the beauty of the book. There's something for everyone and you don't have to do things that don't sound appealing. So I wanted to talk a little bit about why I stated that I think every creative person should read this book. The first one being that I think a lot of us grew up learning that becoming an artist wasn't really a realistic or a good dream to have. This book helped me realize that a creative life is definitely possible. I, a year ago, thought I just wanted art to be a fun hobby and maybe eventually like a side hustle in addition to my nine to five. This book helped me realize that actually my like wildest dreams are a lot bigger than that. And now that I've done a better job of defining what I actually want from my creative practice, it's so much easier for me to take my art making more seriously because I can visualize a dream life scenario where I'm doing art all the time. This book also made me realize that no one is going to help you unlock your creative potential but yourself. Yes, this book is kind of a lot of effort, but the way I looked at it is if I can leave this 12 week course feeling a little bit more in touch with my creative potential, like that is so worth it. No matter what you want to create, I really, really think that this book has the potential to help you so much with getting out of your own way. So I could blab on about this book forever, but I think I will leave it there. I can't wait to see where the lessons I've learned from this book will take me in the future. If you like this video, then maybe you would like my videos where I talk about starting my art business. That's right, I don't have an art business, but I am trying to make one. Um, okay, I think that's all I had to say. I am very sweaty. Uh, buy this book, I recommend. Yeah, I don't know, I hope I made sense in this video. I'm not a book reviewer by any means. Hopefully you liked it though. Okay, have a good rest of your day and I will talk to you very soon. Bye.